Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing our series on the Cessna 152 with kind of the cruise and descent phase. Our final video of course will be traffic patterns as well as getting things down on the ground. So we're just hitting our 3500 feet. And of course, uh, once you've done this in a 152 a couple times, you'll realize the trick. The trick is get to about 3550 feet and then dive. Uh, that is uh, the magic trick here. And that's uh, one of the strategies I've pretty much used for every kind of a thing like that. And the reason being is that you want to pick up as much a little extra speed as you can. So we're going to bring ourselves over to about 68 degrees, uh, which is uh, right there. And now I'm just going to dive at full power down to my descent altitude. Now, the reason I'm doing this is basically for the purposes of uh, building up enough speed to cruise. Now, as I do this on a 152, of course, uh, one of the things you have to be mindful of is not over revving the engine. So again, I'm just enjoying my little acceleration here, trying to pick myself up a little tiny bit of speed in my descent and once i hit my 3500 feet i'll go ahead and get everything uh, nice and set up for cruise kind of a thing you can see i'm holding about eh, 2400 rpm ish that looks pretty good there um, again our course today is uh, 68 degrees you saw a previous video you saw how we had determined that process and i've already got my timer going here and uh, we'll kind of enjoy it now one of the things flight sim does terribly is the concept of trim uh, trim in the real world is a pretty precise tool. It's uh, not going to be an autopilot. It's just, it's okay. Like, it's not bad. But you'll never have as much problem in the real world trimming as you will in a flight simulator. Just one of those things. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, set up our RPM for our correct cruise here. Uh, 2400 is our magical power. And that's going to be right about there. And now uh, what I'm going to do now is I just kind of play the trim game just a tiny bit. To try to get this thing as settled as I can as I sort of lock myself on my 68 degree kind of a thing like that. All right, 68 comes to my left. Like I said, 3,500 is a pretty decent altitude for us. It's a nothing too crazy, nothing too one way or the other sort of a thing. A couple more taps of trim. Uh, keep in mind, as you decelerate, your RPM is also going to start coming down. So uh, kind of you want to kind of catch both of those at the same time so you don't end up kind of fighting it. Give it a couple more taps of trim. Like I said, it'll definitely surprise you how much nose up you're going to require to be able to safely uh, kind of operate this airplane. Uh, you'll know exactly what I mean when you try it. And like I said, uh, Flight Sim does not make this process easy. It's just experience, and it's just being patient. It's also only changing one thing at a time. A lot of people like to go change power, and then they change trim, and then they change this, and then change mixture, and they change power. And it becomes this kind of like vicious cycle that uh, just makes it very, very difficult to be any sort of um, precision. Now, unfortunately for us in this 152, unlike the 152 a trainer would fly, there's no little red marker on the screen that tells you exactly where the horizon is. So unfortunately, we have to kind of work with what we have kind of a thing as we try to visually identify the horizon marks over there in the distance. So what we're going to be doing for navigation today, of course, I'll get us all set up with the mixture in a second here. I'm just trying to get that last little bit of trim to behave. I'm a little high, but again, that's not bad. That's within standards. Um, going ahead and setting up the uh, mixture on this aircraft is a pretty simple. Um, at altitudes like this, um, I'm not going to say it's not worth setting up trim. It's just one of those things where you're barely going to notice. I'm um, not trim, rather, the uh, mixture. It's just going to be one of those things where you're barely going to notice any impact on it. And, uh, that's kind of one of those little tricky things. So I'm going to float over here and uh, take a look at my RPM gauge. And, uh, again, this is always fun to do in a real plane because uh, you have to still fly while you're doing this. There's no automatic pilot to kind of hold the wheel for you. Haha, <laughs> welcome to flying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab the trim handle. Oh, not trim handle, the mixture handle. I'm going to start pulling it out, and I'm going to look over at my RPM. Now, what I'm going to notice is as I crank the RPM, the, R, the uh, mixture control, you're going to see the RPM slowly start to rise upwards. Now, if you're curious how far out it is, you can see I pull that out just a tiny bit at this point. And very, 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 very slowly, see how the RPM starting to climb upwards? You can see I'm at about uh, 2350 now. That just shows that the engine's working a little bit better now that we've got the mixture better. So I'm going to go ahead and keep pulling that mixture handle out very slowly. And did you see how the RPM suddenly dropped? Um, we found our sweet spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the mixture handle in a little bit to bring back up to peak. And however much I just push the mixture handle in, I'm going to push it in one more time, which is going to return us down to a little bit. Our aircraft is now perfectly lean for the purposes of our flight here, uh, which, like I said, is um, pretty much all set up. Now, if I look down here, you can see at this altitude, that mixture handle is just teeny, teeny, tiny bit cracked here. It's uh, nothing too special there. And uh, we're producing our 2300 RPM, which gives us that ground speed of right around 90 knots in the real world. It's going to be a little bit different in the flight sim itself. So when we're dead reckoning, of course, uh, we're not just trying to keep a specific uh, compass heading uh, all along the whole way. We're also supposed to be looking for various landmarks along the way. Now, the nice thing with Connecticut is uh, we've got a lot of lakes. You know, we're not in Minnesota or anything like that. 
But um, we have all wonderful, wonderful reservoirs. We have lakes. And, of course, uh, this part of Hartford, or Connecticut, I should say, is uh, got a lovely valley here. You know, this is the Farmington Valley off my left. And there's actually an airport we're going to be passing by. And you also have this lovely thing called Route 84, which happens to be right here. Follow that to victory, so to speak. And if you look really, really hard, you can actually see our destination uh, sitting there right over there waiting for us over there in the distance. And um, it's just to give you an idea. Now, I'm looking at my timer right now, and I'm about six and a half minutes in. So uh, we're doing pretty well so far. Again, a little bit of turbulence. Uh, Cessna 152s, I don't like turbulence very much. It's kind of one of the things. But one of the things that everybody does with a Cessna 152, of course, is like I said, this is primarily a trainer. It's not to say you can't cruise cross country. It's just to say that, um, <laughs> have fun with that. But one of the things we like to do with a 152 is uh, kind of some of the basic fundamentals of flight. And of those particular maneuvers, um, one of the things you do sort of in your early days of flying, kind of preparing you for a landing, is going to be things like slow flight as well as stalls. Now, this aircraft in flight sim has a very different stall than it does in the real world. In the real world, the stall is uh, pretty pretty benign. It just kind of goes, ah, and sort of falls. But in flight sim, it's a very aggressive, and I'm not going to lie, kind of a dangerous experience uh, that you get zinged with. And you can see here that uh, no matter how much trim I experiment with, in the real world, it's pretty easy to trim it. Um, you can see I'm constantly having to make adjustments. I'm already 50 feet higher than I need to be here, and I'm still having to fiddle with all the controls and things like that. Uh, welcome to flying a plane this lightweight, by the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of training exercises. And of course, uh, whenever we do training exercises, you want to make sure you've got enough altitude underneath you. So whenever we do anything with reduced power, we always need to keep the concept in the back of our head about the carburetor. Um, remember, of course, if we are, have nice humid air, which we have pretty dry air today, not going to lie, um, um, we have to be very cautious about forming ice in the carburetor when we have low power settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and slow ourselves down to slow flight and experiment a little bit. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my anti-ice. I'm just going to smoothly reduce my power, and I'm going to re-enrich my mixture a little bit here. And I'm just going to let the aircraft start slowing down. So I can see here that I'm down to 80 knots. I'm going to go ahead and I'll pop down two clicks of flaps, and I'm just going to allow the aircraft out to continue its uh, kind of slowing down. Now, you're probably sitting here going, oh, but this one goes down to 30 foot degrees. Why don't you do 30 degrees of flaps? Uh, the reason you don't want to do 30 degrees of flaps is because of how challenging of the extra drag is going to create your situation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give myself just a little bit of foot here. I'm going to go give myself a little bit of altitude. And uh, there we go. Uh, you can see right now this aircraft is uh, chilling at about 40 knots. And um, I'm comfortable right now. I don't know about you, but um, I could probably fly like this all afternoon. Uh, this is the definition of slow flight, by the way. Now, remember, whenever you're doing any form of slow flight during training, uh, you have to add big power changes if you want to try to catch things. Little tiny ginger stuff that you uh, normally do for power changes aren't going to be enough when you're producing this much drag. But you can see here that I'm just hanging out. No problem. I'm doing uh, 40 knots over the ground. Uh, if it was a windy day, of course, and it was in my face, I probably wouldn't be moving at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and turn our, our little airplane here. And to turn it, of course, you're going to tip just a tiny bit. And uh, the reason you want to tip just a little bit instead of a lot, uh, first of all, you'll notice just how fast the plane turns now, is because when you're going this slow, you're going to be losing less lift when you turn the plane than when you are staying straight and level. So unfortunately for us, that means if we increase the bank angle, we're going to find ourselves in a stall really fast. And you also notice as I'm just kind of sitting here, just kind of a mulling in the sky a little bit, that it doesn't really have too much trouble as far as uh, maintaining good control. Like I said, I'm doing less than 40 right now. My altitude is more or less constant uh, to what we had a few moments ago. There's the stall warning. Don't panic. You hear the stall, you can give it a little power and just bang out a little bit of that bank angle if it's uh, giving you kind of that concern there. And you can see, uh, no issues, no issues at all. Nothing like that. So what we're going to do now, of course, is we're going to demonstrate uh, two different types of stalls. And this is pretty much a standard material for any kind of 10 flight, a first week of flight 101 kind of a thing. And what we're going to do is an approach stall first. Uh, we're coming to a landing. It starts to buff it, and we stall. And, of course, this aircraft is interesting because if you remember a minute ago, we set our flaps to be at 20 degrees. So um, we're actually ready for go around now. So we're going to go ahead and make the situation worse, and we're going to go ahead and drop that next click of flaps to put us down to 30 and get that big whack of drag. Do you see how fast the plane slowed down? Look at this. I haven't changed power, by the way. That's what I call slow flight. I'm doing 35 knots. All right, let's go ahead and uh, transition into an approach stall. Keep the ball centered. Don't move the aileron. We're going to bring up to 20 degrees of flaps immediately. We're going to hold this level. Catch it. 
And then we're just going to slowly climb back out of that. Uh, really, 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 really important. You get in the habit of um, keeping your flaps at about 20 degrees whenever you have to gain any sort of altitude. Now we're going to go ahead and milk the flaps upwards here. That's going to be 10 degrees of flaps. There's my 55 uh, VX, by the way. Let the nose come down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and bring up that last click of flaps. And we're just going to transition from our VX to our VY. Just like that. Nice. Notice, by the way, I'm not climbing at all. I'm not level, I'm just accelerating. <laughs> so the other type of stall we're gonna take a look at now, by the way, when you do that, you wanna push in your carburetor heat, uh, something I didn't catch. I don't have a separate button on my joystick for that. I really should get one if I wanna fly this plane more. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do an approach stall. Uh, the lazy way to do this, of course, is uh, put the flaps up, which they are, slow down to about a view R, go ahead and jam full power, pull the nose up, and just let it drop. That's it, approach stall complete. It's gonna beep and holler and get angry at you, but that's all it is. You can actually pull back and just let it drop. Nice, important thing with all approach stalls, try not to move your ailerons. Uh, you don't wanna snap yourself into a spin. Uh, speaking of spins, uh, one of the fun things to do in a 152, of course. And what we're gonna do is power back, ailerons neutral, elevator forward, just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and pull ourselves out of the spin. Nice and gently, because keep in mind, we'll be well past our maneuvering speed. And you can see just how easy that is. Another really important thing to remember with spins is neutral ailerons. Neutral ailerons. Uh, you really, 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 really don't want to make your spin worse, and you definitely don't want it to go flat by uh, fitting around with your ailerons uh, during your sudden descent there. All right, that worked great. Uh, those are great little review maneuvers uh, for anybody. Again, things you want to be comfortable with in any plane. I wouldn't necessarily try it in a uh, Boeing 737 or anything like that, but it is a pretty good estimate. Uh, one thing I was mentioning in the previous video is the importance of setting your compass and your DG correctly. Uh, the compass we can't set, the DG we can set based on the compass heading. Uh, we have to be fairly level for this to read accurately, by the way. The nice thing, of course, is a uh, flight sim will give us this lovely D key. Uh, we can press that at any time. When we press the D key, that'll quickly reset your directional indicator so that we know that we're traveling in the correct direction once more. Go ahead and I'll bring ourselves back over to our 68 degree heading, and now we're actually off course. Uh, one of the great things about dead reckoning, of course, is uh, our ability to look around. In the real plane, I actually carry a pair of binoculars, which is kind of neat. Uh, it's the equivalent of zooming in. And of course, uh, for those of you who know this region, our destination is right there off the nose. And now you can see, now that we've returned to our original correct heading, we're actually basically perfect. Uh, we're lined up pretty well there for our particular landing. And of course, uh, once we get there, we'll have a little bit of fun with the landings themselves. So continuing with our dead reckoning, of course, so we'd be trying to identify specific lakes, specific landforms, all that other good stuff that we'd be looking at across the way, and continue with our navigational format. Now, one of the cool things we have on this plane, of course, is that we do have our lovely little VOR indicator, and we also have an ADF, which I think is pretty wild, because there are no ADFs left in the state that I fly in. So it's kind of one of those things, or not ADFs, NDBs, rather. I should be a little more precise in my conversation. It has been a long day. Uh, we have uh, no more NDBs, uh, so we would actually have nothing to even home in on, except for of 1080 talk radio, which happens to be at WTIC in right downtown Hartford. So there is a radio station we could listen to if we actually wanted to dial in the correct frequency. And we can come over here and actually turn that on and listen to it and home in on it at the same time while listening to the baseball game, if uh, that is something you were so inclined to do. So that is all set for uh, this movie, our next video, of course. Uh, we're going to be doing our little descent segment as well as uh, doing some traffic pattern work. Uh, we're going to do some soft, short, and of course, uh, the dreaded go-around. Enjoy.